Hello everyone, I'm Slade, I'll be your host, and welcome to Star Wars Did You Know? Today, we're going to be discussing two classes of Jedi within the Jedi Order, specifically Weapons Masters and Artisans. Before we go further, I would like to make a note, a lot of this material is no longer canon, it's not part of the current Disney canon, it's part of what has been dubbed the Legends canon. Just giving you a heads up as well, there's going to be parts of this which are my own ideas about perhaps to fill in the gaps, so to speak, and I will inform you when those personal ideas are coming up, and you can decide if they make sense or if I'm just embellishing too much upon what is already established. But continuing from where we left off, weapons masters and artisans, what's the difference? Well, there is some overlap. Weapons masters, as far as I know, are actually an older class of Jedi than the artisans. The very first weapon master, literally called the weapons master, crafted what was called the first blade. And the first blade was the first modern lightsaber as we would understand it. Uh, previously, a lightsaber was a hilt focusing crystal in it that had an external power pack either attached to the waist or back of the user and the external pack powered the blade as we know them from the movies and the comics and the books the first blade crafted by the weapons master was the first fully contained and self sustaining blade that we know today, the modern lightsaber with the power pack, the crystal, everything inside of the hilt. And that would go on to form the basis for every blade to be built thereafter. Now, the Weapons Masters as a whole express themselves within the Force. They believe that the Force is best expressed through the creating and mastering of weapons and the techniques to use them. So they will build lightsabers of varying designs, etc. They will build other weapons, such as bladed weapons, uh, blasters, particle weapons, all manner of different weapons, even projectile weapons. They will build and master the techniques to use them, and that's how they believe the Force is best expressed. Now, the artisans are a bit more, you could say, I suppose, lighter in this regard, in that they don't focus specifically on weapons. They can and are known to build lightsabers, but they also express themselves through the construction of starships, through architecture, through paint, through sculpture, all manner of artistic expressions. The artisans believe that the Force is best expressed through creativity, whether it be fully artistic or whether it be practical, but the creation of artistic expression, you could say, is how the artisans see the world, or at least the Force in this case. Now, one thing to note, which I think will be an interesting collusion in this case between a weapons master and an artisan, is the architect droid from the Clone Wars series called Huyang, who serves aboard the Starship Crucible as a mentor for Jedi younglings who are just making their first lightsabers. And this is the part where I'm going to make an assumption based on what we know. I suppose that Huyang is actually the result of a cooperation between a Jedi artisan and a Jedi weapons master, who created a droid, and perhaps even a series of droids at one point, to help younglings learn how to make their sabers, their first sabers. And the reason for this would be twofold. One, droids last a very long time. We know Huyang is thousands of years old. And two, given Huyang's age, he was most likely the droid, that is. The droid is most likely created at a time when the Jedi were still warring with the Sith, on and off, or even full-time. And having a droid, and especially a series of droids, that can instruct younglings in the creation of sabers would free up Jedi Masters, Jedi Artisans, and Jedi Weapons Masters immensely. They would have so much more time to concentrate on other matters, whether it was the expression of their craft, or whether it was fighting a war, or doing tasks the Old Republic had assigned them. But that droid, droids like Huyang, that have archives of all lightsabers and their masters and who created them, etc., would be immensely helpful for a Jedi artisan or Jedi weapons master who wished to impart their knowledge and ensure that knowledge was passed down beyond their own existence. So that is my assumption, obviously. Huyang himself is canon, as is the ship, the Crucible, and the archive of sabers that Huyang possesses. Now... 
Well, another thing, this is another supposition of mine, sabers, lightsabers, are considered something of a rarity in the galaxy by and large. You know, only a small portion of the population uses them, knows what they are really, and sees them regularly. Those being Jedi, and those who work directly with Jedi. And they're relatively valuable, if we're being honest. You know, they're, they're hard to make, relatively hard to make, and they're very personalized. Each Jedi makes their own, typically. There are obviously mass-produced versions for younglings to use in training, etc. But once a Jedi becomes a Padawan, they have the sabers that they themselves made, or perhaps, in some cases, older cases, when there still were Jedi families and Jedi dynasties. They have sabers that were passed down from older family members who had passed away, ancestors, if you will. And my question, and what I think, what happens to these sabers? These sabers are pretty precious. And we see in one comic, a Jedi Master sacrifice his own life to protect a cache of lightsabers from the Sith. And I think... We know the Jedi like to keep archives and histories and artifacts. So it would make sense to me that if on various Jedi temples, if perhaps every Jedi temple even, had a place to honor the weapons of fallen Jedi, Jedi who had died in battle or passed away in the past, and their lightsabers haven't found a home. You know, they're just sitting there. And it's not a case of, you know, showing off the weapon itself. It's a case of honoring the Jedi who created that weapon. You know, this would be a hall, if you will, a hall of weapons where you could see the sabers of past Jedi. And perhaps in some cases, as we see in very in some books and uh, even the newest movie, Force Awakens, where a saber chooses its master, as in the case of Rey, where young Jedi might go sometimes to be inspired by what has come before them. And perhaps on occasion, rare occasion, find that a weapon from a previous master, a long-dead master, speaks to them and wishes for it to be wielded by them. And again, that's entirely my own idea. I fully admit, an idea myself and a friend of mine came up with. But I think it's something that actually could really make a lot of sense in the context we've seen with the, both the new canon and the old canon. Now, when it comes to weapons masters and artisans. There are a few named members that we know about from the old canon, mostly. A couple of them are new canon, but most of them are old canon. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to name Vodosiast Bosk, who is the Jedi Master who trained the eventual Sith Lord Exar Kun. Uh, he is a known weapons master and artisan both. Uh, he used a staff rather than a traditional lightsaber, a staff which he imbued with force power to make it withstand lightsaber blows. And his apprentice, who eventually fell to the dark side and became the instigator of the Great Sith War, Exar Kun, was known as being one of the first Jedi, if not the first Jedi, to use a double-bladed lightsaber in the style what Darth Maul would eventually use in The Phantom Menace. Exar Kun, as far as I know, is the very first wielder of a double-bladed lightsaber on the Jedi side of things. Now, a peer of Master Boss was another Jedi Master named Thawne, whose species I am not aware of exactly. He is a quadruped, uh, almost dinosaur-like creature. And he is noted as being a Jedi Weapons Master. He specializes in combat with his body, his very large four-legged body, very heavy body. However, I think he may also partake in the crafting of sabers, because in one of the stories involving him, we see one of his former Padawans, a Jedi Knight, murdered. And he is murdered for the Jedi, the, not the Jedi, what am I saying there? Not Jedi, my, my, my. He is murdered for the parts of a lightsaber that he is bringing to his master. And it would imply, because he himself has a saber already, we see him using his saber. However, he's, he's bringing these parts to his master, and presumably for his master to use to build sabers. So Master Thawne, in addition to being a weapons master, may also be a Jedi artisan, or he may simply be a Jedi weapons master who also builds sabers for his apprentices or for just the personal expression of the force through those sabers so it's not really quite sure now jumping forwards to the clone wars era we have two more jedi weapons masters and artisans a uh, jedi artisan is one philano box who is a duros a uh, Jedi artisan of the time of the Clone Wars, who was renowned for his saber craftsmanship. And he had several apprentices who went on to build very intricate saber designs comprised of crystal, even wood. Uh, one of them, if I remember correctly, used a gravitic matrix, a uh, you know, personal, a little small gravity device, to, to contain a liquid hilt. 
a fluid hilt. Uh, so that you can see through that, especially, that the artisans, whereas the weapons masters are about the practicality and the mastering of weapons, the artisans are really about the expression of the artistic side. Even when they're making weapons, they are expressing themselves artistically. Another weapons master from this era, in fact, we are told that this is the one of the best weapons masters of his era, was Walden Bridger. Now, I don't know if Walden Bridger is still canon or not. The wiki doesn't specify. However, it's interesting to note that Walden Bridger shares the same last name as Ezra Bridger, who is, the, of course, the, t- the star of the Star Wars Rebels show that has replaced Clone Wars. And it leads one to wonder if perhaps the reason why Ezra has such a unique saber design when he first builds a saber, his very first saber, is perhaps he may have been related to Walden. Now, we know who Ezra's parents are, but perhaps Walden is an uncle or a cousin, and maybe Ezra's parents told him about his older relative who designed lightsabers, perhaps, and Ezra's design is reflective of that. Now, on a final note, in regards to weapons masters and artisans, there's one person who I think might be an artisan, technically, or if he'd become a master, he would be, because it must be clear, in order to be an artisan or a uh, weapons master, you have to be a Jedi master first, and then you can be a common artisan or weapons master. And had he been made a master, I think, of all people, Anakin Skywalker would have been a Jedi artisan. Now, before you get on my case for that, think about this. We know he has a talent for building. We see him build droids, and we know from the various shows and comics that he builds custom starfighters for himself. So, in that regard, Anakin's expression of the Force, when he is allowed to do so, is expressed through his creativity. Not his anger, not his will to fight, but his creativity, his willingness to create, be it droids, be it ships. So if Anakin had remained a Jedi and become a master, I think he would have been known as a Jedi artisan, oddly enough, despite how violent he could be as a Jedi. Alright everyone, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, feel free to like and subscribe. There will be more content coming. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, please do so. Every little bit helps. Until next time, this is your host Slade, and this has been Star Wars Did You Know.